What question are we discussing? I thought you meant me. I <laughs> okay, um, I think we are live again. Yeah, that is it. Yeah, that is it. Yeah. It's not on. Yeah. Why are people asking what you could say? You said it to me, right? Yeah. Ah, ah. That's what I'm saying. What in your phone has died or something? Okay, it's done. I think it's good, but I hope it's done. Yo, the man is like, wait till you see me. You should have nothing out for you. So Please, how are you going? Yeah, you don't have to You don't have to I don't know if I not not I'm not I don't know if I not I not Enjoy. You're going to stay with me. Okay, you guys are still checking. You didn't even take another. Okay. 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 I've told him where the house is. I've told him the 
Okay, I think that was. I don't know about you. Okay. Yes. I want to soft kill I'm going to discuss it. I mean, I I think I'm going to discuss it. Go ahead. Okay, so um. You can now start joining the classes of it that are online. Please give me your phone. You know what to do. Let's yes. stop. Hand it over to me. Okay. Who is ready to answer the question yourself? What is the person saying? Oh, red. Red me. Edwin Gracie. Gracie. <laughs> Where is this thing? No, I'm not. Like, like, you didn't even know. Like, when I said I was about to use this, the thing is, you want to use your words. I already told that you were spoiled. When you're more proud. It's spoiled now because you always put it in the place. You always put it in the place. No, you're always putting it on. That's what spoils it. You want to look bad. No. I don't want to try to do that right now. Okay, so, um... Welcome back to the class. If you can hear me, please indicate. Yes, Put up the fans. Fans. fans, please. Fans. Fans. If you can hear me, please indicate. And things can happen. You get. And our internet is not superb. However, we have to continue. Now, let's continue. Praise God. The same way you rest. Now, with that said, um. I was talking about something. I said that there are three major things you need to take note of. The three major things you need to take note of. I've talked about the first one. What is the first one again? Who remembers the first one? What was the first one? Corresponding. Corresponding alka nouns and alka nouns. The second one is corresponding. Let me take this out for now. The second one. Okay, so the second guy you need to take note of, very important, is your alkanoic acids. Let me, thank you. Alkanoic acids. I think I was talking about alkanols first. Let's do that, sorry. Let's do the alkanols first. Your alkanols and ethers. <coughs> that is corresponding Alkanols and ethers. Please close that door. Close the door. Thank you. So, your corresponding alkanols and ethers. Uh, what does that mean? It means that any alkanol and ether that have the same monatoms are functional elements. Now, how would you know ether? Once you hear something that sounds like alkoxy alkane, something oxy alkane, or thereabouts, you just know it's an ether. Now, let's consider ethers. For instance, if I tell you that I have Ethanol, for instance. Ethanol is not an ether. What is ethanol? An alkanol. It is C2H5OH. Right? How many carbon atoms does it have? That's two carbon atoms. And six hydrogen atoms and one oxygen. Right? Now, if you want to get the ether that has the same number of carbon atoms, it means that it has to have two. So what do you do? Divide the number of carbon atoms in ethanol into two. Which is one and one, right? Yeah. So one means met. So it's going to be methoxymethane. And this methoxymethane is represented as CH3OCH3. And if you look at this thing now, how many carbon atoms? Two. How many hydrogen? Six. How many oxygen? One. And the implication is did you notice that the alkanol and the ether both have the same molecular formula, yeah. which means they are isomers? So once you notice an alkanol, it is always a functional isomer to a corresponding alkanoid. And then finally, it's alkanoids and alkanoic acid. 
finally is how can I it and how can I cut it? So the third one is how can know it and how can I cut it? So and how can I it is an ester represented by COO attached to an alkyl or any other thing. But how can I cut it will have COO attached to hydrogen? So when I write CH3COOH. This is ethanoic acid. But if I'm looking at an alkanoid, an alkanoid that has the same distance is going to be methyl methanoid, which is HCOOCH3. Now, if you look at these two, how do I know that this is an alkanoic acid? COOH. How do I know that this is an alkanoid? COO. But it doesn't end with H. Am I complicating? Yeah. If COO ends with H, alkanoic. If it doesn't end with H, it's alkanoid. Now, how many carbon atoms are here? Two. Sorry, let me put one. that. Eh? It's one and two now. Yeah. So C2. How many hydrogen? Four. How many oxygen? Two. Same thing here. How many carbon atoms? Two. How many hydrogen? Four. How many oxygen? Two. So do you notice that they have the same molecular formula? Yeah. So these two also are functional isomers. So have that in mind that there are three classes. Alkanals, alkanones, alkanones and ethers, alkanoic acid and esters. Okay. Let's leave this and finally get to answer the question. What's the question to the answer? Hmm, sorry. What's the answer to the question? Uh, that should be the question on the screen. Okay, so the question, which of the following are structural isomers? The answer is obviously not propanoic acid and propanol. If it was propanoic acid, the isomer has to be a, a, an alkanoid. You get. The propanol, that's the answer. B is the answer. Yeah. So the answer is... B. Very good. Um, having said that, we go to the next question. The next question that we're going to discuss has to do with Faraday's law. Now, let's look at this question and tell us what we think. Everybody solve. Give me your answer before I solve. Give me your answer before I solve. Yes, that's half. Give me your answer before I solve. Oh yeah, oh. all these online people. I mean, I know they so fast. I mean, I never they hear yeah. me. Give me an answer. Do I have an answer yet? When I slow, I'm gonna do fast too. Any answer? Those in the live class, those online, I meant to say. Yes, what answer do we have? Ooh, that's solo person. Um, okay. Any answer yet? Oh, come on, I'm in the whole wide world. Okay, I'm going to solve. I'm going to solve this one. It seems this one is giving you a lot of headache. Oh, yeah. Please, what did you get? B. B. I hear any answer. You say you don't have an answer. I mean, it's not saying. Okay. All right, let's solve this question. Now, the question says. Half Zn2 plus plus 2e minus, you have to give half Zn solid. In the reaction above, calculate the quantity of electricity that is required to discharge zinc. 
Now, this is a very simple concept to solve. There are two ways to solve it. You get there's a formula method and the relational method. I've said this before. Once you have a question in which you are asked to find the quantity of electricity in relation to the amount deposited, you use two major formulas. What are those two formulas? Is either you use sorry, let me get my mouse in. Is either you use the formula M is equals ZQ or you use the formula N is equals Q all over CF. Where you use this one is if you are giving Z. But in this question, as you can see, we are not giving Z. We can now use this one to solve this question. And it's very simple. Now, according to the question, the reaction given has that half mole was deposited, which means N is equals half mole. That's the first thing you need to understand. Now, the downside which you find the quantity of electricity, which is Q. C. What is C? C is the charge of zinc. And the charge of zinc, when it is deposited, is 2. F is constant. What is F? 96500. And when you solve this thing, it's going to be very easy because 0 0.5 is equal to Q all over 2 times 96500. And that is going to give us Q equals 96500 columns. I hope this was understood. Yes. Okay. Now, the other way to have solved it is, you know, normally, one mole, one mole of zinc, when it is deposited, will give two electrons, which is two times 95. Yes. Therefore, since you are dealing with half, how many electrons do they give? One. If you remember the formula we used initially. Mm, Q exactly. Use the half like So what I'm saying is, if we look at the initial formula I gave us, Initially in the class, I said that Q is equals number of electrons, not not number of moles deposited, number of electrons multiplied by Faraday, which means that if you are looking for the quantity of electricity and you have the number of electrons, number of electrons there is how many? One times nine six five zero zero. Therefore, Q is going to be nine six five zero zero. So these are the two methods to find it. Okay, Osai Collins, as you come again. Okay, now listen. The two formulas to solve this thing outside, listen. Uh, at least note that this is a video, which means you can go through it again. But let me just repeat this uh, for your sake. Now listen. When you have a question and you are relating quantity of electricity to amounts deposited, you either use M is equals ZQ or you use N is equals Q all over CF. The reason you use this the only time you use this is if you have Z. That is the electrochemical equivalent. But if you look at this question, we, we are not giving the electrochemical equivalent. Once you are not giving electrochemical equivalent, you shouldn't use this. The only time you use this is when you are giving electrochemical equivalent. So what should we use here? This particular guy. Why are we using it? We are relating amount deposited to quantum electricity. Now, from the reaction, half mole of zinc was deposited. So N is half. Q is what we are looking for. Zinc, the C of zinc is always 2. Just have that in mind, that the total charge to deposit one mole of zinc. C means total charge to deposit one mole of a substance. And for metals, the charges they carry and their C values are the same thing. For non-metals, it's different. But for metals, it's always the same thing. Now, F is a constant, and that is 96500. Which means that if we apply this thing now, we are going to have that Q is equals NC. In this case, N is the number of moles deposited, not number of moles of electrons. So with this said, we have Q. The number of moles deposited, according to our question, is half mole of zinc. So it's 0 0.5, which is half, times 2, times 96500. If you do this now, what Q would now be equals? is 0 0.5 times 2 is 1. 1 times 95 is going to be 96500 columns. And that option is C. That's our answer. If the option is looking for what? Okay, why is the charge 2? Why is the charge 2? Um, it's quite simple. The charge is 2 because zinc has 2 plus. Um, okay, let me just teach this immediately. Now, let me just show you guys how to get the value of C. Um, the value of C is simple. It is the total charge or the total number of electrons to deposit one mole. So if I have, for instance, Zn, 
two plus and I'm discharging. You know it's a cation, right? Which means it's to go to the cathode and at the cathode reduction, which is gaining an electron, will occur to give the neutral version. So what is going to be here? How do we get it? One times two is two. So this is now going to be, it means that the value of C in this case is two because this C is total electrons for total charge. If I'm dealing with chlorine, chlorine is going to be discharged by removing electrons because it goes to the anode where oxidation occurs and oxidation is lost. And chlorine will give chlorine gas. Now, you have to balance the elements now. So this is two, this is two. Now, to get the charge, it is not only one charge that is here. It's two times one that give one mole. So the total charge now is two. And you have that, basically. So for those of you that are asking, how do you find the charge? Uh, this is how to get it. Now, please, you can just cram this these ones oxygen is always four for c that's when solving this thing oxygen is four chlorine is two hydrogen is two aluminum is three, aluminum is three calcium is two copper is two you should be able to just put those popular ones to your head so that you wouldn't need to be asking these questions or take time to solve them in the hall okay let's try this question the follow-up question on faraday's law and see um what we can do with that where is it okay so let's try this question Let's try this question. Is a follow up on this? Okay, it's not necessarily the same law, but you know, right? I presume you guys know what to do. Okay. You see? Uh, that means your your answer is wrong. You don't get. Or maybe they are wrong. I don't know. Stop first. Are you done solving? Yeah, you done. What did you get? Okay. Oh yeah, more will do. Sharp, sharp. If you have an answer already. Online people, why are you people wasting time? You are supposed to be sharp and fast. Hmm? Someone has an answer B, but he doubts if it's correct. Okay, let's solve this question. Now, please listen. Once you look at the question, everybody listen. If you look at the question and you notice that in that question, you are relating the quantity of electricity or you see in the question, same quantity of electricity. Once you see same quantity of electricity, you are dealing with Faraday's second law. I take it again. Once you look at the question and you see the term, same quantity of electricity, you are dealing with Faraday's second law. If you don't see same quantity of electricity, the next thing you are going to see or hear is connected in series. So I take it again. Faraday's second law, number one, has to do with relating two different substances. And then on top of it, you are going to have the same quantity of electricity passed through the electrolyte. So let's look at that, book, that screen. The screen says, if a given quantity of electricity degrades 0.65 gram of zinc, what amount of mercury would be liberated by the same? Once you see same quantity of electricity, please, it's Faraday's second law. And what is Faraday's second law? I will give the expression. It is given as N1C1 equals N2C2. But because we are dealing with mass here, we are going to put the mass equivalent of number of moles, which is M1 over MM1 times C1 equals M2 over MM2 times what? C2. Where did I say this particular formula is used? When you see same 
quantity of electricity and you're dealing with different substances. So once you have same quantity of electricity and different substances, this is the formula you use. So quite simple, right? Good. So let's go on. Now, what is this going to be? Straight up, um, we have that the, the first mass in this question is 0 0.65 gram of zinc. So we have that M1 is for zinc, which is 0 0.65 gram. The molar mass of zinc, was it given in that question? Yes, it was given as 65. And the charge for zinc, which we all know, was even given itself. Then the second molar mass, sorry, the second mass is what we are looking for, which is the mass of mercury. Do we have the molar mass of mercury? Yes, we have the molar mass of mercury. And the molar mass of mercury is 201. And then finally, the charge of mercury, as we can see, is equals to those online. I hope you are still following. Now, with that said, let's apply these parameters. I'll take the question out so that um you can see the other side of the board. Same quantity. Once you see same quantity of electricity, just know that this is the formula you are going to use. If you see in a the question they are relating different substances and same quantity, this is what you are supposed to use. Okay, so let's get to solving. Now, solving this is quite simple, as I said. Um, okay, so we we'll have that. We are using the second one because it's mass now. Yeah. Okay, so the first mass is 0 0.65 divided by 65 multiplied by 2 equals mass over 201 times 2, right? We can say that 2 will cancel 2 now. And then what do we have remaining? Mass times 65, it equals um, 0 0.65 times 201. And that is going to leave us with M is equals 0 0.65 times 201 divided by 65. If you cancel out, what this is going to give is like 0 0.01, Abi, yeah. which is now going to leave us with 2.01 gram. And you have that. Very simple. Good. Oh. You all got it. Okay, so those, yes. Happy DK B are correct. I think it's B, right? It's B, right? Yeah. Let's check. I think it's B. It's B 2.01. Yeah, it's B. So have that in mind. Very simple, straightforward. Once you see same quantity of electricity, just apply this principle. You get your answer. So you use something else. Yeah, I uh, No problem. Anyone you remember. You get. Uh -huh. yeah. oh, okay. Let me see. Okay. Are we sure. Uh, okay, that's the point. This is not quantity Q. Yeah. Wait, what's your Q? Well, that's the correct formula. That's the correct formula, but not for this. Oh. Uh, so this is what you should use. Okay. Good. So listen, as I said, the quantity of electricity. Once you see that the same quantity of electricity is there. You just know that you are going to use this particular formula to solve it. So this one is now for what? It is when you have only one substance. Okay. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If you are dealing with the same substance, that's what you use. Do you have different substance and different This amount? is different. This particular formula is used when you have different substances and the same quantity of electricity. Okay. You get what I'm saying? But that other one is for same, same substance and different quantities of electricity. Okay, let's move ahead. Um, The next question... We are going to check out is okay. Let's look at this one. Where is it? Where is my fault? Okay, so let's look up this question. What do we think is the answer to this question? Oh wow. Um, and yes. So this is I. The first one is H equals one S one. I equals one S two two S two two P three. What's the answer? I. What do we think? You don't understand the question, right? Okay, Let, let's see. Once you hear the term paramagnetism, please listen, everybody. Once you hear the term paramagnetism, paramagnetism is one represented by a situation where a particular element, how to know it is, the element has unpaired electrons in the orbitals. So, right, paramagnetic elements are characterized by Paramagnetic elements are characterized by. Paramagnetic elements are characterized by unpaired electrons. Paramagnetic elements are characterized by unpaired electrons in the orbital. Diamagnetic 
elements are characterized by diamagnetic elements are characterized by paired electrons in the orbitals okay so for this particular study important very important thing to notice once it's paramagnetic number one is that it is attracted to a magnetic field diamagnetic is repelled from a magnetic field uh -huh. so and you know paramagnetic substances too um their, their magnetism ends once the magnetic field is not there diamagnetic substances also remove yes they remove the magnetism actually goes away once um there is no magnet but ferromagnetic substances such as iron nickel and cobalt examples of ferromagnetic substance once you see these three just know it's ferromagnetic iron nickel and cobalt um i think there's an issue online sorry i just want to confirm if the connection is still there it's exactly the same thing okay um i don't know those that are online please just if the class is still the connection is still there please just indicate Okay, sorry, I was just trying to. I hope the class is still. If you are still there, please just indicate quickly so I can continue. I thought there was a break in connection. So, okay, so as I said, when you say something is paramagnetic, one of the things or the features of a paramagnetic substance is that. It has compared electrons in its orbitals. Diamagnetic has field. But then I give you three major elements to take note of ferromagnetic. Three major elements are iron, cobalt, and nickel. Once you see these three, just know that they are ferromagnetic. Okay, so let's continue. Now, for us to answer this question, it's quite simple. We just need to look at the configurations of the elements, and then we find them out. Now, uh, the first guy is one... S1, which means inside the box, it only has one electron. Because it is not paired, para, is it para, is it diamagnetic or is it ferro? It's para. Why is it para? Because it's unpaired. Okay, we go to the second one. We have 1S2, 2S2, 2P3. If we look at this thing now, we have 1, 2, we have 1, 2, and then we have, oh, sorry, this should be three. Yeah. So one, two, three. Now, talking about filling this thing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if you notice, I did not feel, sorry, let me redraw this. If you notice the sequence I used in filling, I filled one, two, three. I did not do one, two here, then three. This is what we refer to as Hund's rule. Hund's rule of maximum multiplicity simply states that when filling orbitals, you fill singly before you start pairing. So we are going to fill one, 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 and there's no one to pair, so that's that. So para or die is para. Why? Compared electrons. Okay, then we go to the next one. The next one is 1s2, 1s2, uh -huh. 2s2. 2p6, right? 2p4. 2p4. Let's get to work. So we have this. 1, 2. 1, 2. 1, 2, 3, 4. It still has an unpaired. So this is still para. Then we continue to the next one. Ah, That one is definitely definitely not para 
because as you can see everything is filled you can do this for that guy for want of time the answer is i i i and i i i okay so that's that basically now having said that we have to go on to the next one the next question we are going to consider has to do it volumetric analysis now listen it is one side or one part of uh, sorry let me take out the other question mm, the other question where are you oh god okay so i think it's restored i think the internet is restored sorry about the whole within nigeria so let's be managing okay so i said that that once you notice that once you notice that in the question they are relating acid and base that is reacting and what they are relating is the volume and concentration just know that what they are going to use to solve is kavana all over sebo vobo mbo i take it again kavana over sebo vobo mbo whatever you want to call it you call it anyway but this is cava equals na all over cbbb equals what nb now what is ca ca is simply the molar conch of the acid which means CB is going to be the molar conch of the base. How would you know that they gave you molar conch? Molar concentration can be represented by molarity. It can be represented by molar PM cube. It can also be represented by capital M. So once you look at the value in the question and you see capital M, mole per DM cube or molarity, the implication is that you are talking about molar concentration, which is CA if it's an acid stone, and CB if it is that of a base. I take it again. Molar concentration. How can it be represented? Molarity, mole per DM cube, and capital M. You can put these things down if you need to. For those of you that are following online. Okay. Now, having said this, um, we continue. BA is not just the volume of the acid. It is the reacting volume. Reacting volume of acid. So any volume that they said reacts with, that is the volume, provided it is the acid, the reacting volume of acid is VA. VB is not just the volume of the base, but the reacting volume of base. So have that in mind, that when I say VA, I am considering the reacting volume of acid, and VB is the reacting volume of base. Now what is NA? NA is the number of moles of A in balanced equation. In balanced equation please it is not the number of moles in the solution which means you cannot use this formula now to find the number of moles of a substance in a solution this is simply a mole ratio from the balanced equation which means that NB is going to be the same thing but for B so have that in mind that before you even start solving the first thing you need to do is to write a balanced equation for the reaction I presume you are following what I'm saying yeah. now with that said let's get to work um yeah so let me answers those of you that have seen the formulas let's get my answers those here have you got the answer eh? okay you put don't know how to balance equation now let me let me just give you one simple thing about writing an equation so listen listen if we are going to consider this equation he said what volume of 0 0.1 molarity h3po4 was required to neutralize 45 cm cube of 0.2 molarity NaOH. Are we using that Kavanaugh formula? Yes. Why? They are reacting an acid and a base, and it's volume and concentration that they are relating, right? Yes. So automatically, you are using Kavanaugh. Now, how do we get the equation? Very simple. Acid H3PO4 reacting with base NaOH. What is going to do? This guy will collect PO4, hydrogen will collect OH and that is solved. Now, but before you do that, you need to note that PO4 is 3 minus and that sodium is plus. How do we now get the salt? This plus, now this is plus 1, so you put the number 1 here, forget the sign. This is 3 minus, you put the number 3 and exchange it. 
So which means NA will now collect 3 and PO4 all together will be multiplied by 1. So it's still PO4. So the salt you are going to form is going to be Na3PO4 and then plus water. Why is it plus water? Because it's a dryization reaction. It only gets salt and water. Now, um, I would like to rewrite this in a clearer way so that we would balance it properly. So as, as, I, as I said, we have H3PO4 plus NaOH. You know, one trick to get this thing is, is quite simple. Look at the number. Any number of hydrogen is the same number you have here in most cases. Once you are dealing with sodium or hydroxide, sodium or, sorry, sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide, the number you have here is the number of the base you get. So this is equivalent to the basicity. Basicity is the number of replaceable hydrogen ions. So have that in mind that the basicity of this particular acid is 3. Now let's continue. So it will give Na3PO4 plus H2O. Give me answers. Ah, somebody says D. And there's a Audrey. Uh, okay, this is 3. Balance in this 3. And I think here should be 3 too. Eh? How is it 3? No, look at, you start with sodium. When you're balancing, start with metals. The number of metals, you start with that. So there are 3 sodium, so you put 3 and balance it first. Before you go to others. If you, if you do that, that sequence is more easy. Well, no, oxygen is seven. Oxygen is not is seven on this side. Mm -hmm. This is four plus three. Is it seven? Yeah, right. Yes, this is four plus three times. Oh my god. Let me write it clearer. This equation is looking is looking very absurd. Oh yeah, so H3 PO4 plus NaOH reacting to give Na3PO4 plus H2O. You start with the metals. Three, balanced. Mm -hmm. Then you go to PP is 1. P is 1. Then you go to hydrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen here is 3, three plus 3. Four. Uh, uh, 3 plus 3 is 6. Okay, no, sorry. So this is now 3 times 2, 6, right? Okay. And then oxygen is 3 seven. plus 4, 7. This is three, 4 plus 3, 7. Okay, so what do we have? We have that the number of moles of the acid is 1. Number of moles of the base is 3. The concentration of the acid was it given? What was it given as? 0 0.1 molarity. The concentration of the base was it given? Ah, didn't they give 0 0.2 molarity and the OH? 0 0.2 molarity. Ah, uh, then the volume of the acid. What's the volume of the acid? Oh, it's not given. That's what we're looking for. And the volume of the base. What's the volume of the base? 45. And with that now, what we are going to do to get our answer is kava na. All over sebo vobo mbo. Okay, so let's get to our answer. Let's get. To, let me take this question out so that we will solve this in a bit. Uh, yeah. Where is it? Where is it? Where is volumetric analysis? Um, so now, to finish this, um, we we'll apply our principles. What do we have? CA, according to the question, is 0 0.1. PA is what we are looking for. And the number of moles of acid is 1. Divided by CB, what's CB? 0 0.2. VB is 45. And then over 30. Over, no, over 3, right? Yes. Thank you. What do we do? We cross multiply. This is going to be 0 0.1 times VA times 3 equals 1 times 0 0.2 times 45. And then, okay, separating. Oh, shama. Okay. This is separating this. Okay, so this is now going to be um, 0 0.3 VA equals 9, nine right? Yeah. And then when we do that, VA is going to be equals 9 over 0 0.3, which is like 30 CMQ. And that's the answer, basically. I think that should be D, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so that's that for those kind of questions. Okay, you guys should like attempt this one quickly. This one, attempt it quickly in 10 seconds. Be done with it. Oh, yeah, 30 seconds. Everybody, online, offline, 30 seconds. Fast about it.
Yes. Sulfuric acid is H2SO4 now. Yes. Yes. No, At your fat H. Balance it. Wait, I've told you what to do. What they call H2S? H2S is hydrogen sulfide. Yes. Oh yeah, oh. you cannot balance the equation. Because I told you that the number of the hydrogen in the acid will tell you the number of the acid of the base. Sorry, if it is Na or KOH. Once it's NaOH or KOH, any number of the hydrogen is the same as the number of the base. Okay, I see the way two people know. 30 seconds. Okay, equation. I see you people yeah, have no, equation problem. Equation is H2SO4 plus NaOH. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, somebody has given me answer. I said, "If I hear, yeah, waste the time." Reacting to give Na2SO4 plus water, and this is two. This is two. So, Havana, what is Ca? Okay, I'm solving. What is Ca? What's Ca? What's the concentration of the acid? One point two five. The acid is not sulfuric acid. Yeah. So what's the con? Are you following? Are you following? So, what's the position of the acid? 1.25. They didn't say molarity completely. Probably a typographical error. Uh, did I get the volume of the acid? Right? Neutralize 10 cm cube of the acid. So, the acid is 10 cm cube. What else? The concentration of the base. What's the concentration of the base? 0 0.5 molarity, right? Are you giving the volume of the base? I think that's what we're looking for, right? Good. And then, do we have Na? According to the balance equation, the number of moles of acid is 1. The number of moles of base is 2. So, with that said, uh, na. why are we using this? Because we are relating volumes and concentrations of reacting acids and base. Okay, so applying this principle, what's Ca? 1.25 multiplied by 10 equals 1 divided by 0 0.5 times Oh, yes, that's true. Let me take away the question so we'll see the board. And all you could do is say king. I think you're blocking. Oh, I thought you just said king. Okay, yeah. Funny. Okay, sorry, we can now see it, right? So we have that 1.25 times 10 is equals 1, all over 0 0.5 times the volume of the base, which is what we are looking for, all over 2. When you cross multiply, the volume of the base is going to be equals 1.25 times 10 times 2 divided by 0 0.5, right? And our volume of base is going to be equals what? 50 cm cube. Very simple. Now, having said this, we are going to get into the aspects that has to do with enthalpy and energy change. But before I get into enthalpy and energy change, okay, no, sorry. I think I need to talk about periodic table and periodicity. Um, periodic table and periodicity. Let's try a question on periodic table and periodicity. Because we are sure. We are sure these people will not let you people go without giving you one or two hard questions on those concepts. Yes. Okay. So, look at the question. The question says... The question says, in the periodic table... What is the property that decreases along the periodic table and increases down the group? Decreases along the periodic table and increases down the group. Now, let me just give you one straightforward thing. Eh? Just know this thing and know it. That these properties will increase down the group. Decrease. Just somehow crown it if you can. Increase down group. And uh, decrease across period. So number one is atomic size. Number two is atomic radius. Anything that has to do with size, atomic size, atomic volume, ionic size, ionic radius, it increases down the group and decreases across the period. So even if 
Uh, so number three, atomic volume. Number four, ionic size. Number five, as many other things that have to do with size. Now, the last one is electro. Oh, yes. And I wasn't told that I was blocking my screen. It's all right. Let me just remove it. But I presume you guys have been hearing me. My monitors in this class are horrible monitors. They are not even helping me. Okay. Um, let's find it. Here. This is... Okay. Very good. So, with that said, so... Atomic anything size, anything size. The last, the last one is electropositivity. One of the things I just used to remember these things is this. You know, if you are going across the period, you are not increasing shells. But once you start going down, you increase shells. That's why you have period one is shell one, period two is shell two. So because of that increase in shells, assume that the size increases. I get what I'm saying. So this one increases down the group, but they decrease across. I presume everybody has taken note of this. I've corrected that. Is it name Mandoagua? I've corrected that. So, as I was saying, that anytime you are dealing with a series going down the group, atomic size increases, atomic radius increases, atomic volume, ionic size, electropositivity. These things increase down the group and decrease across the period. The ones that do the opposite are these ones that sound like, you know, chemistry. I don't know how to put it. Those are a lot have to do with size. So, Across period, increase across period. The ones that increase across and decrease down the group. Number one, electron affinity. Number two, electro negativity. Number three, Ionization energy. Ionization energy. So once you are considering any of these three, just know that they decrease down the group and increase across the period. Now, with that said, we let's consider the question that we talked about or the question that was put up in the screen earlier on. Okay, so what did the question say? The question said, a periodic table, what is the property that increases along the period and, sorry, decreases along the period and increases down the period? What's the answer? The one that has to do with size, right? If you notice, atomic number, atomic number increases uh, both across the period and down the group. Just have that in mind. There was always an increase in atomic number, whether across the period or down the group. Electron affinity. We just wrote it as you can see on this board, sir. As you ask, sorry, let me. Yes. So as you can see on the board, electronegativity, electron affinity, and ionization energy they increase across and decrease down. Cram it, whatever. Just put it in your head. I'm not going to explain in details these things, but just have that in mind. The electron affinity, electronegativity, ionization energy increases across and then they decrease down. So they said decrease. Down, sorry, increase decrease along or across the period and increase that. The answer is atomic radius, as we all can see. So the answer is okay. So having said this, um, I said I'll go into periodicity. Am I done with that group? There's this question I wanted to talk about. I think this is it. Yes, this is it. Okay, so let's look at this question. It says the, electro the electronic configuration of two elements with similar chemical properties are represented by this dash and dash. So those online, they are with us. What do we think is that? Those here, yes. T. Okay, T. Uh huh. Someone said T. So let's hear your answer. Let's hear your answer. Let's hear your answer. And the same Which one shares similar chemical properties? C. No. C. Okay, let me explain. For those that do not understand, so listen. For those that do not understand, first thing I would like you to take note of is this. 
that once you have a particular um, configuration, elements, elements, sorry. Okay, before I get to that, let me just say one or two things. The 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 shell number. If I have an electronic configuration. This particular number here tells me the shell number. And this shell number tells me the period. I take it again. Shell number is this one here. The outermost, sorry, the outermost shell number tells me the period. So if I write something like 1s2, 2s2, the outermost shell here is number 2, which means the period of this element is number 2. Now, to find the group, what you are going to be looking at is this particular number here. This number tells you the number of electrons. It tells you number of electrons. And the outermost number of electrons in the shell is what gives us the group. So once you look at the outermost shell, you count all the electrons in the outermost shell and it will tell you the group. However, the number of the outermost shell is what tells you the period. Have that in mind. Now, if I have 1s2, that's for number 1, option A, 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. And you ask me, what is the period of this element? The period of this element is 2. Why? Because the outermost number is 2. Now, but if I'm asked to find the group, some of you will say 5. But it's not 5. Why is it not 5? This is still number 2. So if you're looking at the total number in the outermost shell, the outermost shell is 2, right? So anything that is inside 2 is still part of the outermost shell. Because of that, you notice that your group will now be 2 plus 5, which is how many? 7. So, the people that down, 